Good morning, YouTube. In today's video, we're going to be doing geometric or f-stop timing. Now, this is a completely new process to me, and I've held off for way too long, so I'm finally going to give it a try. Now, we're going to be printing two negatives today, and they're going to be from the Florida video linked here and in the description. My thought was that using f-stop timing here would be a great use case because these are two negatives that were captured the same time of day using the same camera settings of a similar subject. So in theory, getting the base exposure of one negative will make it that much easier to print the next. In practice, it was a little trickier than I thought, but overall, I'm very happy with this process. Now, before we get into making the print, I want to first talk about what f-stop or geometric timing is and why you might want to do it. Now, specifically, this is something that I first read about in Way Beyond Monochrome Second Edition, which is a fantastic resource. If you're interested in darkroom printing and you don't already have this book, I highly recommend it. I've probably gone through it twice already, and I continue to reference it all the time. And this is a perfect example. When I first read about this concept, I thought it sounded like a great idea, but I was hesitant to add it into my process because I'm so new to darkroom printing. I've only been doing it a couple of years that I feel like anytime I introduce something that's a change in my workflow, it's opportunity for error. So I'm a little hesitant, but I really wish I had given this a try sooner because it is absolutely something that will be a part of my workflow going forward. It's so much simpler and it just makes sense once you start doing it. Now, specifically, I want to talk about the three biggest advantages that I found. And first was when I was making my test strips. Now, what we have on the left here is a linear test strip. It's what you would usually do, say two, four, six, eight seconds. Here we have 10, 15, 20. Now, when you look on the left, there's a clear delineation between a 10 and 15 second. It's roughly half a stop difference. However, as we move to the right, you see those lines start to fade. Even our increments are the same. The amount of light in terms of stops is diminishing. So we go from a half a stop to roughly a quarter stop, et cetera, et cetera. It gets smaller and smaller to where these delineations are almost impossible to see. Now, when we look on the right, what we have is an f-stop or geometric test strip where we're doing one-third stop increments. So each increment is one-third of a stop, and you could see that clear delineation between each wedge. Now this gets very easy for you to pick your two wedges that are about right and then go to a more um, granular uh, timing so that you can dial it in and get your base exposure just right. So this was the first major advantage to me. The test strips were much easier to make and gave me much more usable information. So for me, the biggest benefit of using geometric or f-stop timing versus linear timing comes in the form of dodging and burning. Now this is something I always struggle with as you'll see later in this video, but this process makes it so much simpler because once I find my base exposure, I simply go to the yellow column in this table, look for my base exposure, and now I know where I need to go to dodge and burn by certain increments. So I was using a base exposure of 10.1. So if I wanted to burn half a stop, it would be 4.2 seconds. And this just makes it so simple for my stupid brain to do the right thing. And then as your base exposure changes, if you're making a bigger print or a smaller print, all you have to do is determine that base exposure, find it in the table, and then you can apply the same dodging and burning that you used on your previous print. And that brings us to the third and probably most important part, which is keeping good notes and reproducing our images consistently. Now, if we look at this print map here on the right, the way that this works is you'll find your base exposure and then you'll document your dodging and burning in stop increments. And this is fantastic because say you go from an eight inch print that has a base exposure of six seconds and then you wanna print a 20 inch print and the base exposure is 40 seconds. All you have to do is apply these stop increments based on our chart here of your base exposure. So once you find that base exposure, the work is already done. You just look at your notes, figure out where you need to dodge and burn based on the map. And it's very easy and very repeatable. And this has been my biggest struggle in the dark room is repeating the results and getting the same print at different sizes. So this to me will lead to a lot less waste and it's just so much easier to comprehend for me, at least. Okay, that's enough jibber jabber. Let's make some damn prints.
It's worth pointing out that the one thing that is different about this process and probably a little bit more difficult is rather than being able to use the beeps of the timer to move from one wedge to the next on your test strip, I actually had to do individual exposures for each wedge. So say it was 1.6 seconds per wedge, I had to hit the foot switch each time. I didn't show that because I didn't wanna give you a seizure, but it is worth calling out that it is a little bit more of a pain. Instead of just having a 10 second timer, you move it every two seconds, you do have to move in those increments. Now what you're seeing here are the three strips that I made each about a third of a stop apart once I got really to refine that base exposure. For those of you that are interested, we are using Ilford Multigrade 4 fiber-based paper, and I'm using Photographer Formulary 130 Developer in a 1 to 1 ratio, and then their TF4 Fixer in a 1 to 3 ratio. The middle tray is dis just distilled water. I rinse it for about 30 seconds before moving to the fixer just to prolong the life of that fixer and rinse off a little bit of that developer. Now this ended up being my base exposure. It was about 10 seconds at F11, and I moved to a grade three filter. Now, what I'm looking at here is I liked overall the foreground and sky of the image, um, and I was worried about how much it was gonna darken down, so I definitely didn't wanna add any exposure in the foreground of the sky. However, I felt like the subject needed a little bit more punch and a little bit more contrast, so I wanted to do some burning in the middle of the image. Now this is something that I really struggled with because I wanted to have separation between these wooden posts and the concrete, and it was very hard just to burn a section of it. So I think when I return to this print in the future, rather than trying to burn the subject, I'm going to go with a darker base exposure and try and dodge that foreground and sky, which I think will be a lot easier to accomplish. After several attempts of dodging and burning on the main subject, I decided to call it a stopping point here. I'm still not happy with how the subject looks, but before I waste any more paper, I wanted to see how it was gonna dry down and see what these highlights would look like. So what I decided to do was take my notes and apply it to that dodging and burning math that we talked about earlier. So I know how to get exactly back to this point and then can make some tweaks from there in the next session. But what I wanna do now was take that base exposure of 10 seconds and make an exposure of the next negative so that we can start printing that one. And here is our base exposure of the second negative. And I do apologize about the angle of my GoPro. I have a very low ceiling in my dark room and I kept banging the GoPro <laughs> against the ceiling. So the angle's messed up, but you can see the print um, and get the idea. It's the same issue as the one before. It's just uh, slightly underexposed and the contrast is lacking. Um, so what I ended up doing was really just trying to burn in this central area because it was these weathered posts that drew me to the composition and they're just sort of melting away into this concrete and it just doesn't work. So I worked on dodging and burning the post the best I could to just get that separation that I was looking for. Much better. Yeah. Okay, so the final print is going to be a base exposure 10.1 here, and then two thirds of a stop darkening on this top half. And unfortunately, I do see there's a little, I don't know if it's a scratch on the negative or what, but I'll have to touch this up before we mount it. I'm really happy with the highlights through here. 
and the shadow detail in here is really nice. This is exactly what I wanted this print to look like. And like I said, it'll dark down a little bit more when it dries, but I think this is gonna be it. Now I'm just going to pop them in the washer for about 25, 30 minutes while I clean up. And then we'll pop them on the drying rack. Okay, don't you dare make fun of my darkroom slippers. <laughs> now, I want to point out a couple things as I load these prints onto the screens. The first is that I load in the order that I went into the washer. So the first print that I put on the screen in that front left is the first print that I exposed. And this way it aligns with my notes so I could see where I made changes and how they impacted the final print. This has been very helpful for my learning process to document everything and then be able to line those documents up with the images themselves. So I load from front to back, left to right, in the order I expose, and then it lines up with my notes. And you'll see that here. They're getting gradually darker as I was dodging and burning these prints. Now, the second thing is I load them face up. So I dip my squeegee in water, I squeegee it, and then load it face up. And this way, I don't have to deal with water spots on the final prints, and I don't risk putting them face down and damaging the surface of the print. So this has worked really well for me. Now, when you see the second image that I'm gonna load here, is the first image I exposed with the second negative, and you'll see that it's very dark. And the reason was I refocused and I forgot to stop down my lens, so it's two stops overexposed. Now, as I look at these images after they dried down, I realized that even though it's overexposed, I really liked the final image. And the reason was what's lacking in the other prints is those dark shadows. There's plenty of grays, there's plenty of highlights, but there's no depth to the image, there's no darkness. So this overexposed image that I'm about to place, although it's too overexposed, I really like the darkness. So what I think I'm going to do is reprint these negatives and I'm gonna have a darker base exposure. And rather than trying to darken down the subject, I'm going to dodge the foreground and the sky. And I think that that'll be a lot easier because the foreground and the sky don't have as much detail to work around. It'll be a lot easier to dodge those areas than it is to burn down the subject. So. Although I'm not happy with the final prints here and I think that they are underexposed and don't give me the contrast I'm looking for, the point of this session was really to try f-stop timing and I think it worked out fantastically and it will definitely be my method going forward. But this was my first time attempting a full session in the darkroom while recording and there were some challenges but I am hoping to continue doing this. So please let me know if you find this type of content helpful or enjoyable because I would love to make more of it. That's going to do it for me this week. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Now get out there and make some images.